Okay, everyone. Let's get started. Uh, what I'm doing today is a fecal exam. We're going to do it on Audrey. I want to get a before count before she lambs, and then I'll get an after count. Um, I wasn't ready on the last view that I had. Her pomancha went way down after she lambs, so she's probably under a lot of stress. There's supposedly two weeks after they lamb that their immunity goes down. So you gotta watch it before and then after. So now just after it went down. So she was like trying to gobble up the um, power punch last night. She wanted to take the syringe out of my hand because I've been giving Audrey an ounce every morning and night. It's pre-lambing. And then the mom sheep, I have discontinued hers post lambing and so when I was going through her pen to give Audrey hers she grabbed the syringe out of my hand so I went ahead and gave it to her and checked her for mancha and it was low so I guess my new indicator is if they want to try to grab the power punch from your hand then you might want to check them this is the procedure for doing the McMaster's uh, fecal it's the eggs per gram count so I just printed it off and now I'm locating what I need to start here. So I got to measure two grams of the fecal pellets. So I'm just going to put it, you know what I need to get? A little cupcake. Um, you can take a piece of what we used to do in chemistry was you used, um, it looked like wax paper or something. They were little sheets. You just folded them. Okay, so we're gonna just fold it here. I do need some tweezers, which I do not have, so it's possible that I'm going to. Um, collected this yesterday and then I stored it in the refrigerator. And I'm gonna turn my scale on. Oh, please, I think my battery's dead. Nope, it's on. I guess that wasn't hitting the on button. So, um, I'm just, I put it in the refrigerator for storing it, and I'm just going to, <laughs> this is terrible, I'm not going to click, I'm using this fork, should have described to you what I did to the fork prior to picking these up, but I'll show you in a second, so I just collected these, put them in the Ziploc bag, I take a bunch of these Ziploc bags with me, and then I have a marker, Ooh, that's four grams. Oh my. Now I gotta try to get them off of there. I'm gonna try to take the, the the harder pellets off because they're actually they actually are harder to crush up. Gosh. Sorry for you folks that are watching me and they're like so I, it says two grams on here. I think that's what I said I need. Okay, I got the two gram pellets. Now, you are not going to be able to see it on this fork, but what I did was, there's four tines, the two middle tines, I pushed them back so that when I uh, smashed up these pellets on the side of my beaker, so that, you know, it's rounded, it, I bent it so that all four of those tines push up against the glass. So, now I got to dispense 28 ml flotation solution, which is here. I've already had that mixed up. And <clears throat> it's actually just sugar, sugar water. So, so here, I don't want any bubbles in there. So I've cleared the tube and I'm gonna suck it between the lines up to the side. Oh, it's got a little bit of air pocket there, it looks like. So, um, 32, okay, 28, um, and then I put that into the beaker, turn that on, all right, I have the formula for the flotation, but it's not with me front of me, but I mean you can pull this off the computer and get these 
instructions. I'm supposed to mix them up in there. And then I'm supposed to let it soak for approximately five minutes to see. Okay. so cute watching that sheep go after that power punch because before land she would not take it she hated it they'll run from you and then <laughs> they hate taking it so Paul was really um I don't like just giving that to them it's kind of expensive to be um just handing out but uh she needed it obviously but what I did was I have dry molasses that I'll give them for the added nutrients and stuff. And I put that in her feed. And obviously it's not that she wanted because she picked around it. So she's not happy with the dry molasses as some sort of a supplement for energy and vitamins and minerals. So I thought that was kind of strange. She wouldn't take the molasses. So I'm going to try some liquid Maybe some liquid molasses in her um, feed this morning and see what she, she, I'll try to get her through the first, it's two weeks that I think I read that the, their immunity towards the worms goes down. So <clears throat> it's been one week since she's lamb and she's doing good. There's no signs of anything yet. Uh, <clears throat> So another week, I may just power punch her on through that to see, you know, will her immunity build back up, and then I don't have to do any worming. Um, I just talked to my vet yesterday, and I guess he and I are now pretty much on the same page since he's been into some of the new science and reading and going to more continuing education classes on it, and basically. So when I did my pre-med in order to go to vet school, it was our basic first year genetics class that taught about all this antibiotic resistance and why and how it's happening and it's basically the same for the worms as it is for the bacteria and um, the deal is that you know you have let's say a hundred eggs parasites bacteria whatever in that hundred there is already a bacteria or worm that's already resistant to these uh, toxins that we're giving them to kill them. And so if we have a hundred and there's say 25 that are resisting already, just nature's made them that way. It's with people, it's with bacteria, it's everything. So then you come in and if you give an antibiotic or if you give a wormer, what happens is you only kill the bacteria that's not resistant to your wormer. Now, it's basic biology that these parasites, they, well, they're not parasites, they're, um, so I'm trying, I'm using the old language, but there is a new language, but so these bacteria are then, because you've killed, they conjugate. And they, that's basically just transferring information. So the resistant ones can transfer information to the non-resistant ones. And then the non-resistant ones, once they do that, say, for a couple generations, then they become non-resistant. Um, or you basically can keep the non-resistant ones there to prevent the two resistant ones from coming together and sharing that information and creating a ton more of these what we call superbugs. So the use of a antibiotic at all is allowing the resistant ones to continue to multiply. You don't want to give the antibiotics. You don't want to give the wormers because no matter what, you're making a problem worse. So you have to question 
are we better off just euthanizing the animal that does not have resistance and only raising stock from the older ones that we know have resistance? Or is it no matter what you're going to have young ones that are not resistant and what you have to do is just power punch them on through to the point in their life where they gain the immunity. Um, that's what we need to be studying and I guess there's not a whole lot of profit in that so it's not happening at least not yet and so I don't know how to solve this but this is what I'm trying is so this you I know your parasite load is probably high her immunity's down and um or maybe her just her vitamins and nutrients are down I mean I know she has parasites because I've done the fecal I mean, there's eggs there, but I mean, it's impossible to have an animal with no eggs. Uh, it's nature, you know, and then there's a lot of studies out there that tell how important it is for them to have that. They're curing diseases now with parasites, so it's like a nightmare which way to turn. So I've mixed this for probably five minutes. I feel like it's a pretty good distribution or pulverization of this. So what we're doing is those are a ton of fibers in there and it's all packed together and within those fibers there's hidden it's like an easter egg hunt <laughs> we're trying to find the eggs so the flotation device which is like floating an egg in a salty water uh this is just a sugary water so when we're when we're stirring this up and we're breaking apart the fibers and they're releasing their eggs and this flotation solution is making them float to the top so I have two grams in here and then uh, this 28 mLs of the flotation. So apparently there's this mathematical equation you do uh, that tells you how many eggs you have per gram. Now the goal here, not to throw off, is to pull the eggs from, I think, the center of the solution while you're stirring it. But first, and this is also, I believe, going to skew it a little bit, is filtering this plant material out. So I've got this little funnel, and I have a cute little beaker. And it's not even a beaker, but it's just a cute little jar that I found. Another cute little jar. And I've got this little filter here. This is a three inch T ball strainer. Not T ball strainer. T. You put your tea in there, tea ball, and then you put your tea in so you can make tea. So I took it apart, and I have this side that I use as my little strainer. Works amazing. <laughs> okay, so now you mix up your sample, and you pour it through the strainer. And so surely, yes, you're going to get some eggs stuck on the wall, still stuck in some of this fecal matter so I stir it up in here a little bit too to try to continue to crush and release eggs. Woohoo! So this one might might have me with too much fluid in this little jar. So the last one said 30 ml. But this should be close. It should work. It's just woo, it's just gonna fit in my little beaker. And then I'm gonna suction that out with my dropper. So I'm not an expert at this. It's just a couple times I've been doing it. So when I've talked with my vet, I mean, basically, <laughs> he's like, this is pointless. Okay. Yeah. We know they got a, we know they got worms. I'll agree. Uh, now I guess the reason we're doing this, that we don't need to know, um, how many worms she has technically. He's saying even if there's a million in here, don't be quick to worm because if it's not affecting her, don't worm her. But I am gonna see what kind of worms are there so that if I do worm her, then I'll know which worm to get her. Shooty, see? Too much.
this one here. Jigs, whoops, stirred up, stirred up to be from about the middle here. And I'm putting it on what's called the Miss McMaster Sloppy. And I think it's supposed to do two of them. sit for five minutes. The inhale is working. There! Look at how perfect that came in now. Urgh. Okay, well, I'm going to do this again. And I'm going to... This is the one I'm looking at under here, which is nowhere near where it like, is in the location in my microscope. But that's okay. At least, I mean... Okay, here it is right up there, whatever that is that I'm seeing. I'm going to pull it down, and then I'll refocus your camera. Okay. I think now I've taken it completely out of the screen somehow. Let me put it back up. So in this camera, I think I'm seeing it upside down and backwards. There it is again. Right there at the top. Okay. There it is. Do you see it right here? This great big huge thing? Okay, so he's easy to find. Uh, that right next to him. The small thing, that's just an air bubble. So... <laughs> This is my question, because I'm not finding a whole lot. Is that a good thing? I mean, parasite resistant, I would think, would be you could just harboring as many parasites as, as you would want to. And oh, Okay, here's something. It's a small one, so I don't know if this is a small... I. Okay, here it is, in that corner there. This looks like something too, but in here, yep, yep. It's something that I'm questioning, so I think that's the coxy. And that might be, the bigger one might be a mini nematode. So I need to do it this way. So it's about in the middle of my camera right now. And now it's about in the middle of your screen too, but it's a little to my left, on your end, it's a little to the right. So if I move it down, a little that should move it up for you and it did it took it right up there in the middle so at least I've figured that out in the center of the screen see it right in the center woohoo found one it's outside the territory that I should be looking in though okay I'm gonna try my other slide now see what, her, what it's looking like. Okay, y'all, I think I really want to focus directly right in the center of the camera. Group. So they want to call that every time on everything. That little circle there. Um, I'm finding it very hard. I have a book on, you know, veterinary parasitology that I paid a fortune for, and then, um, I, it didn't seem to help me at all. Okay, so we have another one here, which so I can show you. Let me hear you. See? Right there. That's where I'm seeing. We're seeing the same thing. And like I said, I'm calling that like a mini strongle. No, maybe that's a full strongle. This is a little bit smaller. Not quite the mini. I think the minis seem to be... Um, Oh boy, I'll show you. <laughs> he is a, <laughs> that one there is definitely a mini stronghold. Look at this guy. You're not going to miss this one. You'll find it right off. <laughs> That's a stronghold. Definitely, without a doubt. He's huge and he's got these circles inside there. You can see him beautifully. 
She just an amazing photo of a piece of pollen. See that right in the center? I mean, you can't see all these spikes coming out of it. But the reason I think there's pollen in there is because they're eating clover hay right now and it's got the bloom on it, so. I wonder, you know I'm not going to be able to get a better magnification.